Hello, I'm Jillian, a learning advisor with Academic Skills, and I'm going to give you a wrap up, a summary of what we covered in the writing workshop this week in your professional practice course. So let's kick off by going over what your task is. So as you'll see in your Waddle site, you need to look up the uh, assignment task 1B for a little bit more information. But basically, you have to write a 200 word paragraph answering the question, how has Bitcoin challenged traditional notions of currency? So that's your question. It's kind of a broad question in scope, but you only have 200 words and one paragraph to answer that question. And it's really an exercise in using sources. So you really want to think about what are the main ways or what is the main way that Bitcoin has challenged traditional notions of currency and use the sources that are given to you on your Waddle site. There are five sources there under assessment, assignment task 1B. You'll see the list of five sources. Those are the ones you're meant to read. You can use about three or uh, four or all five of them in your paragraph if you'd like. Um, it's a bit hard to stuff them all in, so what you want to think about the strategies you're going to use to incorporate these sources into your answer. And we're going to go over a lot of examples so you'll get a good idea of what to do to be able to complete this task well. Okay, so hopefully you've all had a look at the lecture that was given by Tess, the manager of academic skills. And in that lecture, she covered what the academic integrity expectations at ANU are, such as why referencing is important and, and really the nuts and bolts of how to reference. So for this assignment and for your PPE course, you can use Harvard or IEEE referencing style or even APA, really whatever style you like as long as it's consistent. So pick your own style that you think is appropriate and that you um, want to learn more about or you already know, uh, you've already used in the past and you feel comfortable with, whatever it is, and stick to that style. But you want to use uh, a consistent style guide, the course, and an academic skills re uh, recommends that you use the Monash guide. And we link to that guide on our website. So you can just Google ANU reference academic skills referencing and there you'll see the link to the Monash guide and there you can pick whatever style you uh, want to use and then you can pick what source type you have if it's a journal article or a book chapter or anything like that or a newspaper article and it will go over the example and a template of how to do the in-text reference and how to do the referencing at the end in your reference list so do brush up on that workshop uh, on that lecture and um, make sure that you know how to use a style guide and create the in-text reference and the reference list at the end but now we're going to talk about ways to incorporate those academic sources Sources, okay, so the before what we're talking about is how to acknowledge sources and you know that's very important but even beyond that what's harder to do is how to incorporate these sources well into your writing into answering your question so there are only four ways that you can possibly use academic sources in your writing and here they are so the first one is quoting copying others words exactly and putting them in quotation marks and that's something you're not going to do very often in your discipline. Uh, so you want to do this very sparingly, only if it's really, really important and you feel that you can't put those author's words into um, your own words, but they have to kind of stand on their own. So you want to use that one much less and the other three are the ones that you're going to use much more. So the next one is paraphrasing. So that's explaining someone's idea in detail using your own words. So that's not quoting, but putting someone's particular idea. So this might be a couple sentences that you might paraphrase. It might be a couple paragraphs that you might paraphrase and condense the idea 
into your own words. And we're going to do, I'll show you a strategy for how to do this well. Because it's difficult to put someone else's words that seem like they've expressed it really well. It's hard to put it into your own words, but that's what is necessary. That is the academic skill that um, your markers want to see. We want to see that you can put ideas into your own words, that you can articulate them yourself, that you really understand them and, and can express them on your own without just using some using those original words. So it really shows a higher level, a deeper level of understanding understanding that you want to be able to show off in your writing and that's what we're asking you to do in this paragraph and then the next one is to summarize so that one you'll be using quite often and that one's a bit easier because you're not taking an author's particular ideas instead you are summarizing an author's whole argument so the whole um, chapter of the book or the whole article itself you're summarizing the main idea the main argument of that entire article so that's something you can um, more easily put into your own words. They're not, it's not a particular sentence or even paragraph, but it's the entire thing. How are you going to summarize this? Um, what, what this author has said overall, what their main idea is. It might also be a summary of just a section uh, within a chapter or within an article, and that's possible too. So bear that in mind. This means to combine multiple sources that have a similar argument. So that could be two, three, or four sources, maybe even five sometimes, depending. Um, and to synthesize means to bring together. So you're bringing together these sources to show that they have a similar argument, um, and that really reinforces and strengthens your point. That and, and it really shows that you have quite a handle on the literature, that you're able to bring in, bring together all these different sources to show that they say something similar in support of your argument. Okay, so moving on, just to hone in now on those two options of a paraphrase and a summary. So to really think about what the differences are, you'll be using these two fairly often. So remember that a paraphrase is one idea from the text. Um, around the same length as the original, usually what you write is going to be a bit shorter than the original. What you write should be a little bit, you will usually be a little bit more condensed, just zo zooming in on that particular idea you want to express from that author. Um, and it's in your own words, so the wording is definitely changed um, very much so. And a summary is from that longer piece of text, and it's, of course, much shorter. The summary that you write is much shorter than the original text, and it covers just the main point. So paraphrasing is harder to do correctly. Now, just looking at this example, I'm not going to read it out to you. You can read it in your own time if you'd like. It's taken from a journal article, and I just want to point out to you all the times, as you can see what's highlighted, all the times that the author has, has cited a source. So sometimes they cite a source in the brackets, and sometimes they name the source in their sentence and then put the year in the brackets using their referencing style. So that's an option that you have where you can name the source, um, name the author within the sentence, or you can decide to put the author's name and the year in, in the brackets in your in-text referencing. Now here you'll see um, EG, that means for example, and that's what these authors have chosen to do. They've chosen to say for example and name the various authors that um, have, have done this, have analyzed consensus algorithms. You don't need to do that. That's just something that these authors have done as an option, but it's not something um, that you necessarily need to do yourself. Okay. And so here's just a little screenshot of the Monash guide and how you can have a look at that to figure out your particular source type. And then if there, it's one author, two authors, three or four or more, and how do you do that? How do you cite that? And it gives you those examples that you have to follow and figure out how to follow and gives you examples of how to use and how to how to use those uh, acknowledge those sources in your text 
called in-text referencing. Okay, so have a look at those examples carefully as you write and go for acknowledging your sources. Now here's a little breakdown of what we saw in that paragraph when sometimes the student author chose to paraphrase um, using author prominent using the author prominent style. So in that case, the author's name, Nofer et al. and others, is used in the sentence to begin the sentence. Nofer et al. has studied Bitcoin technology. Um, and other times you might choose to uh, use the idea prominent style. And that means that you write about the idea and you put the author's name in parentheses at the end. Okay, so that's your choice when you want to name the author in your sentence and when you want to really focus on the idea instead and put the author's name in the bracket at the end. So usually when it's a prominent author, when it's a well-known author in the field, when you think it's um, important, maybe even just for variety sake to name the author um, you know it, it's it's good to to have that sense of when you want to write and use the author's name and when you want to make the idea more prominent okay so using those examples and here's a sample summary so we can see here a summary from Avron, Dewinsky, and Gupta. So that's the summary of the author's main argument, the citation that includes the author and the year because we haven't named the author within this sentence. And then there's the um, full reference at the end. So just a summary for you to have a look at. And then here is a little snapshot of our Turnitin practice site that shows you any unoriginal material that you may have included in your in whatever it is that you've written. So in order to access this Turnitin practice site, you access it through your Waddle. So you just need to go to your Waddle and type into the search bar, Turnitin practice site 2020, and you'll see um, that will come up and you need to self-enroll yourself each semester. So each semester is a, a new course that turns over. So enroll in the semester one course, the only one that will be available right now. And there you can submit your drafts for um, to receive this Turnitin originality report. So that this is a good idea to do before you submit your assignment. If you're unsure of any paraphrases that you've done, and you want to check if you've by mistake or you've been careless or neglectful and you know you might have paraphrased too closely this will tell you if you've done so as we can see here from this example from this highlighted text here this student author has paraphrased a little bit too closely to the original using this phrase link a user identity to an address so you want to be careful not to do that and um, this practice site will help you to do that. You can find out if this has occurred for you, make your revisions, and then submit it again if you want to the practice site, um, and or just then go ahead and submit it to your course, okay? And another point is that this, you get a match overview, you get a percentage, so here it's 34%, um, but the percentage doesn't really matter. It could, um, be that this student had a lot of references and your reference list will always come up as unoriginal because um, hopefully you've cited good sources that other students have cited in the past so your reference list should always come up as unoriginal and that will make up a bulk of the percentage if you have any quotes those should also come up as unoriginal any um, keywords and like that turn into phrases will come up as unoriginal, but those are important to include, those keywords that wouldn't be included as unoriginal necessarily. And um, organization names sometimes come up as unoriginal, so you've got to be able to interpret this originality report yourself, have a look at it, figure out what is okay and what you need to revise. And you can always come in and see us at Academic Skills if you're unsure about this. So just something we went over in the class, um, what we saw before, you know, this was someone trying to look at this original piece of a couple sentences and decided they wanted to paraphrase it. And this is what they came up with. But, you know, here's what Turnitin says, that actually the last bit is too close to the original. So you don't even want that whole phrase to come up. Um, this wouldn't be, you know, a huge, 
huge violation, but you want you don't want these smaller poor practice um, showings to really accumulate. That's going to show the marker that you are just um, being careless with your academic integrity. So you want to do your best not to have these things happen as much as you can. Okay, and then here we have a quote. Someone has quoted from the original, and we can have a look if this quote is done correctly or not in the Turnitin site. So as we can see, these two words aren't highlighted, which means they're um, changed from the original, and that's not good either. If you have a quote, you need the entire quote to, turn, to, to be highlighted. Okay, so this wouldn't be correct either. You've got to be very careful with your academic integrity is the point there. And now the final one, looking at the original and then looking at what the student um, wrote as their sentence and checking it on Turnitin, we can see that there is no match for this paraphrase and you don't want any match for your paraphrase. So that is correct, correctly paraphrased and correctly referenced. It does have the year and the page number included. So that's a good idea to include for your quotes and your paraphrases, the page number that you found this idea on or this um, piece of, of a sentence that you've quoted. You need to have the page number included, but for a summary you don't because it's a summary of you know, covering several pages, covering an entire article. So a summary doesn't need to have a page number, but the quote when you quote and when you paraphrase, it does. Okay, so this all sounds difficult, doesn't it? It's hard to do this well, hard to do this correctly. It takes some time, it takes some effort. And so we have a strategy to help you with that. So here is our strategy, and we'll um, think about how you can put it into practice as well. But you've got to begin by, of course, doing your reading of these sources. And as you read, you need to think about your purpose in reading. You need to think about your question. And as you know, your question is, how has Bitcoin changed? challenge traditional notions of currency. So as you read, you're really thinking about how each of the each of the articles, each of the book chapters you've been given can answer that question. So they're not all necessarily focused on answering that particular question. They maybe have different purposes. Each of those articles that you've been given is about Bitcoin, is about Bitcoin technology, but it may be about something different about Bitcoin, have a little bit of a different angle. And as you read, you have to pick up and find out what are the relevant bits of information that have to do with the ways Bitcoin challenges traditional notions of currency. And as you're reading, you've got to take those notes. When you find some good information, about those challenges to traditional currency, you've got to be active and think about your note-taking strategy. How are you going to really note this down carefully, put it into your own words, but also be aware of keeping track of how you're going to acknowledge your sources. And then you go ahead and do your writing. Okay, so this is our systematic approach for doing this. So as you are reading, and maybe you're identifying um, a bit of a text like we see here that you think is really key and really important. It's a good, it's a good and important idea for what you want to include in your paragraph in the, for this assignment. So you might think about highlighting in some way or copying and pasting that original text into a column and then thinking about how are you going to take notes from this original text. Okay, so here's our example of notes. Just some dot points in your own words. You've got to put it into your own words. Um, you know, what are what are the key points you get out of this original text that you've identified as really important? Um, what are some of the key things that are going to help you to answer your question and really fulfill your purpose in looking at this piece of text? Okay, so th this is, uh, you know, a hard part as well because it's about putting it into your own words, um, but not in full sentences, just in kind of dot point note format. And from there, you can write your sentence, okay? From there, you think about how to really formulate your sentence, acknowledging your source, and really honing in on the, the main idea that you want to 
point out from this source, okay? And this is something we went through in the class time when we had two hours together for the students who are here. Um, we had a bit of original text chosen. They took some notes and we put the notes on the board and then they all wrote their own paraphrase sentence just to practice. So you might want to practice that too with the sources that you have on your Waddle site. So another thing you've got to pay attention to is your voice. So how will the reader know when you're paraphrasing and when you're making, when you're giving your own ideas in relation perhaps to those paraphrases or to those summaries? So you've got to um, be able to indicate that with your language. How are you going to indicate the positive and negative appraisal of someone else's research and ideas? So maybe not necessarily in this paragraph, or maybe you will find that um, to be the case for this paragraph. But you know, as you also as you continue on in your postgrad, you want to be able to talk about how you feel, your stance on these ideas that you're researching from other scholars. Um, it's not just they're all good and they all support what you have to say. Um, you're going to have actually more positive and negative appraisal of this research um, as you move on into your postgrad degree. That's going to be the expectation. So you want to practice doing that, particularly now in your professional practice course. And how do you show the extent of your commitment to your own ideas? That's, um, you know, you can use particular language to do that. So we'll look at some examples now. So you can really highlight um, your commitment to your own ideas and really highlight um, how you feel about other people's research through these various choices of adjectives, verbs, adverbs, and nouns. So Evans's rigorous approach. So already we get the sense that you have a, this author has a positive uh, feeling, has a positive appraisal of Evans's methods of how they've come up with their research. Um, and, you know, other words, pointing out limitations and drawbacks really shows that you're analyzing the research that you're looking at. Um, other words, um, strongly recommend. So that shows um, Baumgartner and Bogosi's their own commitment to their ideas because they strongly recommend. And that's um, a word that this student author has chosen to include. So you want to think about those adverb choices, those verb choices, um, how are you going to be the most accurate and how are you going to really get across um, your commitment to your ideas, the author's commitment to their ideas and your appraisal of their work. Okay, and some other ideas to really think about how you're going to qualify your ideas and how you're going to show contrast. So don't forget to include these kinds of clauses and these kinds of words to really show um, maybe some contrasting ideas between the research that you've uh, that you've looked at and you know how that all adds up in terms of how you're fully answering the question. So here are um, these words in action. So you can take a look and read through this paragraph. We've looked at it before and now we've highlighted not only the, re um, the acknowledged sources but those words that indicate the author's um, you know how, how what how the author is transitioning through ideas and um, how they're really telling us about how the authors feel about their research and how they feel about these researchers work. Okay, so you don't want to, so the structure of your paragraph, really getting into now what you're going to do in this paragraph. So paragraphs are generally 150 to 200 words, and in your case, you're going to go for that max at 200 words is, is around where you're going to be for your paragraph. And you want to think of it as this metaphorical hamburger bun, where the topic sentence, that first sentence of your paragraph states the overall point, the idea of your argument. Okay, so just how, in particular, Bitcoin challenges traditional notions of currency. And then you get all those supporting sentences in the middle where you're incorporating all that evidence through your quotes, paraphrases, summaries, and synthesis. And of course, you're also going to include within that some of your own analysis and interpretation. It's not just paraphrase, summary, paraphrase, summary. Um, you've got to really connect that information that you're including to your point 
which is, you know, the ways in which Bitcoin is challenging traditional notions of currency. And then you want your concluding sentence to really just summarize what you've done and what you've pointed out in your paragraph, how you fulfilled your purpose. So here's one sample where we've got a topic sentence. Blockchain technology offers opportunities for increasing security and privacy on the internet, but there are some serious limitations. So that's a different question. The question there um, was, what are the limitations of blockchain technology? So this sentence is pointing out there are some good things, but there are some serious limitations. That gives us the sense that this whole paragraph is going to be about those limitations. And then we can see a lot of citation, both idea prominent and author prominent in the ways they've acknowledged sources with lots of paraphrase summaries, quotes. Um, I would say here probably there maybe isn't enough of the author's own analysis of the student author's interpretation of these sources. And it's just a lot of sources put together, um, but it is a good example of how to use sources, um, except missing that bit of, of the author's own, the student author's own analysis of what these researchers have said. And then the concluding sentence, it is early days, but analysis so far is indicating that there may be a number of issues that need to be considered before there's wider adoption of blockchain technology. Okay, so that kind of wraps things up, looking at the implications of this issue that, um, you know, we need to consider these limitations before we can really go further with this blockchain technology. So that's a good example in terms of topic sentence and concluding sentence. And now putting it through turn it in, the only thing highlighted is the quote, which is fine and great. Okay, so that's that's exactly how it should be. And then the reference list here of all those sources that have been cited in the paragraph. So six sources is a lot to cite in a paragraph. And if you do synthesis, if you're bringing together um, a lot of similar ideas, then it is possible. But if you individually cite six sources in one paragraph, that's quite a lot. Um, and it makes it um, quite apparent that you probably haven't had the chance to do your own analysis of those sources and incorporating them into your own ideas, but are just kind of giving a summary paraphrase quote, summary paraphrase quote. Um, and you want to definitely break that up with your own with your own commentary on those on that research, what it all means for your question about for your answer to the question about the challenges, how this um, Bitcoin challenges these traditional notions of currency. So here's another example that you can read through in your own time. Um, where we have a good topic sentence and a good concluding sentence. Some of the students pointed out that, again, in the middle here, the student author didn't really do enough to um, give their own analysis and interpretation of these sources. So you want to be aware of how you might do that in particular to your answer to the question. Okay, so just as a reminder, you're always acknowledging other people's ideas. You can't forget to do that. Otherwise, we're going to think that it's your idea and we're going to be very confused and you're not going to be showing good academic integrity. Okay, and there's the link there to the Monash referencing guide. And then please, um, you can, I know you're studying remotely, but you can make an appointment to come and not come, but to see see a learning advisor through Zoom, or you can send um, a, a draft via email and we'll give you feedback. So um, don't think that you are without this service because we are very happy to um, meet with you via Zoom or to receive your draft of whatever you're working on via email and provide you written feedback. Okay, that's it for me. Good luck with your writing and I hope this was helpful and I hope that you um, enjoy learning about Bitcoin. See you later. Bye.